Once upon a time, a shepherd called Caldy noticed that his sheep were feeding on the berries of an evergreen bush. A moment later, he stared open-mouthed as the sheep began to dance and frolic and leap about. Putting two and two together, he had some berries too, and in no time, those sheep had a very hep shepherd. Two cappuccini and one espresso. And that, says the legend, is how coffee was born. Coffee is a stimulant. It stimulates the nerves, alerts the brain, wakes up the, um, yes. And coffee is big business. The coffee bar boom in Britain began in 1952, when the first espresso machine arrived from Italy and was set up here in London Soho. Would-be millionaires were quick to jump on the bandwagon, now the coffee wagon. Being able to count, they reckoned a cup of coffee costing tuppence to tuppence halfpenny to make could be sold for ninepence to one and six, according to the trimmings. But it didn't work out like that. For every three coffee bars that opened up, two closed down. Soon the get-rich-quick boys were wondering what had hit them. Lesson one, overheads are high. They reckon that if a character sits for half an hour over one cup of coffee, his share of the rent, heat, light and service mount to the point where the management is paying him. Half an hour, some of them will sit here all night if we give them half a chance, and then complain their coffee's cold at the end of it. And that's how it is that most places sell food as well. There's many a man who thought to make his fortune from a sack of ground-up berries and a good head of steam and ended up slaving over a hot spaghetti bolognese. Lesson two could have been learned from the old-style coffee houses of London. Stick to one class of customer and keep the rest out. A square in the wrong hole is just not dug, even by the jukebox. This is Lloyd's of London. It began with a few 17th century insurance brokers doing business in Mr. Edward Lloyd's coffee house in Tower Street in the city of London. And today, the most successful coffee bars are those with a specialized clientele. How to attract them? Here's one way. Let's slip out, shall we, for a quiet cup of coffee. Le Grand, for 50 years a rendezvous for writers, artists and actors. Ten yards from London's street of celluloid, Water Street, it seldom lacks a film producer or two. But can you guarantee me an egg certificate? Can't foul. What about when the girl's in the bath and the thing oozes up the plug hole? What about a title? I was a teenage Dracula from outer space. Many a novel or play has been written on these hallowed tables. 30 years ago, famed poetess wrote, I have measured out my life with coffee spoons. Budding actresses sit around quite a lot. There's always a chance you might hear of something. So you know the acting. Hello, girls, all right? Oh, by the way, there's an audition for dancers at Max Rehearsal Room. It's about 15 minutes ago. Sorry, over five foot fours only. Oh. Never mind, girl. Some prefer to serve in coffee bars rather than sit in them. For one thing, there's the chance that an agent or producer will spot the star behind the apron. And for another, well, listen to Mary. I have to earn my own living. And at the moment, I can't do it from acting alone. So coffee bars are the perfect answer. You can work as many nights a week as you like. I do about four. And with my wages, which are 12 and six, and tips, I can get about six pounds a week, which keeps the wolf from my door. Whether you come from Mayfair or Milan, a coffee bar is a very good place for learning uh, English. Rabbit? Crime. I said to my trouble and strife. Can she rabbit and pull? I said, hold your box of toys. I'm going to it. get a cup of you and me. Come down here, know you and me, coffee. Cool, well, what coffee too? Coffee? Gee. Most coffee bars advertise in vivid neon lights, but London has one invisible coffee house, Soho's The French. From the outside, apparently nothing but a newspaper shop. Mm -hmm. 
inside, some curious characters congregate. Iron Foot Jack and his retinue, the self-styled King David. Astrologers foregather here. Yes, you must know the birth time to within a few minutes. It seems to me that you're just juggling with a lot of figures. The, uh, a map is a complete well, hole. Well, you work it out and you see the planets go through the Look, houses. a map is a complete hole and you can't just pick one piece out and uh, sort of progress it through umpteen... Some coffee bars have had curious beginnings. A left-wing journal, the ULR, couldn't make ends meet and hit on the idea of making coffee pay for the printer's ink. Hence the partisan, where university students and other assorted eggheads meet to put the world right or more often left. Excellent practice for the game of politics. Pictures on the wall are for sale, a growing habit in many coffee bars. The management gets the wall decorated for nothing, the artist a free shop window. This coffee house, Sam Widges, is mainly frequented by painters. One or two, without the price of the cup, have left paintings behind in payment. Frankly, I'd rather have the money. You could be wrong. Remember Van Gogh and the young Picasso? In matters of decoration, each to his own taste. Aptly named Le Macabre. Grave, the Dead March, and the Dance Macabre. Oh, that sounds ever so nice. Each to his own taste, and varieties of tastes are catered for by the coffee bar. These bright, or dim, fanciful, imaginative new additions to the British scene. See you again soon, looking at life. In the meantime, what about a nice cup of tea? Tea? Did you say tea?